So socially anxious freeze, right? What is that? Let's get really clear on that first. Essentially, when we go into a social situation and we feel socially anxious and we're getting numbed out, basically our nervous system is shutting down. It's confronting all sorts of uncomfortable energies. <clears throat> we're noticing dissociation, so an ungrounded state where we're looking around and things feel a bit foggy. It feels like we've got that like thousand yard stare. We can't really fully focus on people without our mind um, conjuring up some sort of story and we just feel really ungrounded. And this can be really challenging in the workplace. And especially if we have like a spiritual practice on top of that as well. Um, we can have thoughts like, why am I still feeling this way? Um, can they, can they see that I'm anxious? And it conflicts with all sorts of spiritual identities we might have and all sorts of ways that we're seeking validation. And it's, uh, it's pretty challenging, right? So this is the nature of socially anxious freeze. So how do we come out of that is the question. That's the golden question. So let's get into that now. So the first concept I want to introduce is building capacity. Capacity is this sort of ephemeral thing that uh, sort of like spirit or soul. We can't really name it directly or feel it or grab it or anything. It's like smoke grabbing its smoke, right? Building capacity. But this, this capacity to build capacity is something that is a definitely a real phenomena. And it seems that the more that we grow spiritually, by the way, if I'm sweating, it's because I just had a shower and I, I worked out. <laughs> so, um, it, it's, it's a concept that if we, um, the, the more that we open up spiritually, right? So, especially if we have a meditation practice of some degree, especially if we have done like psychedelic trips or even basic mindfulness with like headspace or anything like that. Um, what it's doing is it's opening up the capacity of our nervous system to feel more deeply and thoroughly. You know, it's almost like we're reopening back up to our humanity again. So, in a way, if we have social anxiety, we can go into these retreats. This is what I did, by the way. I went to my like first 10 day Vipassana meditation retreat thinking that, okay, I'm going to come out of social anxiety if I just do this big retreat. I do the, the hardest, most challenging thing that I can think of to obliterate um, the perceptual overlays that are, that are contributing to my suffering. It seems like a pretty rational idea, right? Which it is in a way, and it definitely works, and I'm not undermining that. But I think when we have trauma, which um, with, with social anxiety, we typically do from like narcissistic abuse or um, some sort of... Uh, silencing of our voice or shame, very deep shame, um, which happens through childhood. Uh, we, what we do when we do these intense meditation practices is we open up our capacity. So, our body's pretty frozen by this point, right? And then what we're doing is we're blasting it open even further to then feel all of even more of what was unconscious to us. And I know for me, this is something that I did when I went into um, uh, when I was doing my first Vipassana retreats, I would, I would do them and I would have this expectation that, okay, great. Now I can go back into the workplace and I'm going to feel so much better. <laughs> but what ended up happening was I became brutally aware of unconscious frozen emotions and unresolved trauma that basically flooded my nervous system and made me even more acutely aware of how socially anxious I was. And because I hadn't built strong capacity in a stepwise approach and done some integration work prior to, well, I had, but not a lot, um, then that's where I faced problems where the nervous system was just so overwhelmed. And it got to a point where I had to quit my first job as a cardiac technician because I was just so dysregulated and enough was enough. I just couldn't handle it anymore, to be completely honest with you. Um, so, Building capacity. So, how could we do that in a meaningful way? Well, and that's where I want to introduce the second concept here, which is titration. This is a, a term coined by an excellent uh, gentleman that some of you may know called Peter Levine. He um, found a founder of somatic, ex somatic experiencing. And titration really is a simple concept of um, I think the way Peter Levine describes it is like, you remember in chemistry in school where you titrate chemicals together. So, if you add an acid and a base together, a chemical reaction forms, but if you, and, and, and it sort of fizzles out and then 
once the chemical reaction ensues by dropping a little bit of an acid into a, into a base, the reaction ensues and then it fizzles out and it dissolves, right? That's option A. Or option B is we pour the whole liquid in and the whole glass explodes. And unfortunately, that's what we sort of can do with these practices, uh, with spiritual practices, is we try to go all in and we have this lofty background idea of transcending it all. Like if I can just discover equanimity uh, and I can really integrate equanimity into my life or if I can just penetrate through to the no self insight or anatta or just have this psychedelic trip that's going to blast open and annihilate all of my childhood trauma or ayahuasca doing the same thing. And I know then I'll be good, right? But again, what that's doing is it's, it's blowing open our capacity to feel which is fine. It's okay. Like, I mean, this is what I went through anyway, um, from what I can tell, right? This is just my perception of it, but we're blowing open our capacity. So, but what I would invite you to do with this method of titration is rather than going into a, like going into a social situation, having had spiritual experiences and stuff, and then being in this freeze response and being so ungrounded and unaware of what to do, what we can try to do is to do it in small doses, right? So, we go up, we, we're in freeze, we titrate. So, we do a little bit at a time. We might set a commitment to ourselves that, okay, I'm going to allow myself to experience some of this freeze emotion. I'm going to be with it fully. I'm going to drop my attention right into the heart of that emotion, of that freeze energy with loving, acceptance, compassion, taking it slow, going to feel it deeply. I might notice the thoughts that say things like, I can't handle this. This is too much. Can they see me? Can they see that I'm anxious? I might notice the spiritual identity that I'm trying to maintain of the one who's really grounded and relaxed because he's done X amount of retreats and yet I'm still really anxious. So, I got to hide that, right? So, I can't show that. Might notice that thought <laughs> and then just put my attention gently into that freeze sensation, wherever it lies, maybe in the chest, maybe in the shoulders, maybe in the jaw, with a sense of acceptance and loving curiosity. You can be here. I'm sorry that I've avoided you. And if we can do that, the more that we can connect to the body sensation and be astutely aware of any thoughts that are trying to pull us away from the sensation when we're in a social situation, right? and just feel in small doses, then that's a really good way to approach it. Now, you know this, practically speaking, we have jobs, right? So, sometimes some of us have jobs and we feel so hopeless because this social angst has been so pervasive for so long that we're feeling that all of the time. So, it's like, how the hell do we titrate? How do we do small amounts in small doses if we're constantly feeling that way? And I, I really get that, right? So, this is just that can come across that previous p example of just like boilerplate advice. And unfortunately, and you know, I would work with people one on one in a, in, a, in a course for this sort of stuff to actually feel these things out. But this also comes into what practical boundaries can I set in place to, you know, regulate myself more so that I can titrate at a more effective rate. Because if I'm going into the workplace or into daily life and every single social encounter that I go into and I'm consistently dysregulated, then A, I probably need help and that's okay. But B, what are some practical measures that I can take so that I can still allow myself to feel dysregulated, but not all of the time? And I can't answer that for you. This is something your intuition has to answer, right? So, just food for thought, right? Because, and I, I want to plant that seed because maybe the job that you're doing and you have been doing for the past five, 10 years, that's consistently causing you to be socially anxious at a heightened freeze response consistently through the day where you're engaging with people and you're employing all the spiritual practices, you're doing all the right things, right? Maybe you just need to set some more practical boundaries and confront that fear that you do have the capacity for of change, of going into the unknown. 
right? So the, this is like, it's, it's not really a simple thing, but I just wanted to share those two concepts with you to put a bit of a frame around it and to give you a sense of what it might look like to come out of a freeze response where you can then feel the emotions in small doses, applying loving, compassionate acceptance, building that capacity to feel these more uncomfortable emotions, which you do have the capacity for, but you have to feel that out in your direct experience. And then maybe employing certain somatic modalities or whatever you find helps to then be with that sensation in a meaningful way to then integrate it, examine your beliefs around it, and then let it go. So thanks so much, guys. I hope this helps you and like the video if you found it valuable.